Let's get some insights of the news shape of the markets. For that, we welcome in Rebecca Walzer is with us, president of Walzer Wealth Management. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me, Nicole. So we heard a lot from Jay Powell yesterday. Today is the second day of testimony. Did anything stand out to you? Well, I think the market, as you saw the market pull back a little bit after his comments, because I think the market was expecting after the tick up in un unemployment for to 4.1 with June's numbers, Nicole, I think people were expecting him to come out and be a little more clear and direct and say September is looking more right, realistic. Right. And he didn't do that. So the market didn't get that confidence. In fact, our probability actually went down after he talked for a, just by a little bit for a September cut, but still obviously above 70%. So that was a little bit concerning because I still think that he's just not in the camp of dovishness enough that he's ready to cut. I don't blame Powell. I mean, we have basically built an asset bubble to an extent in all industries because cost of capital is so low for 15 years, Nicole. And less than until he has data that shows that there is actually economic malaise, why would he cut? It's because people can't afford it. Both consumers and businesses can't afford this cost of capital, but you can't just stimulate and uh, into perpetuity without a reason to do it. It's interesting because he, he certainly said, you know, there's risk if we raise risk if we cut yeah. and sort of is staying the course. Yeah. Um, he did know if unemployment goes higher, that would give them more reason to cut, but didn't sort of really clarify how much higher. Yeah. I mean, we know inflation's target's 2%. That's right. very clear. Very clear. Uh, but he did not say, you know, about where, where unemployment would need to be for them to be inspired to cut. But I think that's what he's trying to do. He's very careful now, because I know I've been on the show many times, and I've said, I think he's back himself into a corner. Like, now he is going to be in a position of, he must cut, when the market was going into this year with six cuts, and here it is, Nicole, July, and we're talking about the pop probability of a September cut. So he's being very um, uh, in, unclear on purpose right. so that he doesn't feel like he's backed into a corner again to act when the market, when he's not ready. December has 96.7% <laughs> likelihood. We will get I mean, one cut yeah, by this right. year. I mean, that seems to be, everybody sort of feels like there's going to be at least one or there two There has to be one cut year. because we are getting to the point now where finally the data, there's always a lag effect and the data is right. finally catching up and we're finally seeing an, un, an unemployment numbers are being more sticky, Nicole. They're coming in higher and the actual unemployment percentage is the highest it's been since 2021, October. So we're really starting to see slowdown in labor that always follows the consumer spending always drops because of that. Retail sales are sluggish because of that. Manufacturing is down because there's demand is dropping. So overall, this is not the bullish market that the the stock market projects because right. it's very sector concentrated and very narrow. And and he's very good at translating what he has on his mind. I remember back in the day where the Fed made moves unexpectedly in between meetings. Uh, you know, I remember having to rush here to the New York Stock <laughs> Exchange. It was one January. I mean, no, everybody was floored. Uh, you know, the Fed still can make moves. I, and the reason why I remember that is because July's likelihood is 4.7 percent. Yeah. Okay, that's zero. That's basically <laughs> zero. But right. you know what? Who knows? I mean, I don't think that the Fed's going to surprise us. But Hot wouldn't CPI? it be interesting if they do? Right. If I don't CPI know. comes CPI, down PPI, tomorrow. Right. PPI comes down Friday. Then. Perhaps he's going to say, you know what, we've gotten enough data yeah. between uh, May and June uh, labor and now a couple of months of CPI data trending. It's still it's still up. You know, it's still yeah. three uh, one on the on the core for June. So, I mean, you know, for May, um, but still, Nicole, he, he, he is in such a difficult place. I don't envy him at all. And to answer these questions and a lot of politicians, especially on the Democratic side, are very frustrated. You can hear it in the questions because they're like, when is there going to be a cut? The, the people are really struggling. Right. The credit card balances, the savings depletion, all these things, yeah. you know, he's getting, and, and he's just like, but I'm just trying to <laughs> yeah. do my mandates, okay? I mean, I, I got a credit card, you're t making the point. I, I'm scratching my head, but I think it said 28% or 31% and that's with great credit. that came in, and I'm like, <laughs> what? Who wants that credit card rate? That's no. terrible. So you, some I mean, people, they take it thinking they they'll get, pay off the balance, yeah, and then, then they, they get trapped. Get the snowball they effect, get trapped. and then they can't get, right, they can't get out from under it. Um, let's talk about some of the 
ideas for investors now for this back half of the year? I mean, what works and what doesn't work? Well, it's interesting because if you look at all the investment banks, they're very bullish. And yet when I look and I analyze their analysis, they're bullish because they do believe the market is going to recover, Nicole, with demand on a big rate cut. So once again, they're really pinning this bullish sentiment, not on the underlying fundamentals. The fundamentals do not agree with the bullish sentiment unless right. it's in the AI and tech sector. But otherwise, the fundamentals are not there. And so that is why a cut does make sense to me um, if we're going to continue the economy as we've had it. But, you know, so to be bullish, you're in just the sector of AI. And the question is, is the yeah. forward PE too hot right now and too high right now because there's been so much concentration in it that it's too late to get into the game for right now. And so the question is, are there some deals? You need to look for deals. But otherwise, Nicole, I'm really in the safety of the commodity space. I think that is the better play for the balance of 2024 because we've had all of this, you know, massive yeah. acceleration. And yeah. now is the time where we're starting to see it the flip side and it might be time to take some profits. See, I had somebody on yesterday who said, I can't deny the semis. I, you know, the momentum is there. The run continues. They've led the market. The breadth has been so narrow. You sort of have to be in them, but just take profits quickly. Yes, um, exactly. You know, I don't know if you agree on that. I mean, names like NVIDIA and AMD and whatever. Look at Taiwan Semi. I mean, so many of these names. And then when you talk about commodities, what kind of names do you like there? Well, like you know, what parts of the commodity? Yeah, so I'm not talking the volatile sectors of, you know, you know, agriculture and stuff like that. I'm really more on the the metals side I for see. now um, because I just see with the inflation, with the really we're talking about the global implementation of Basel III, which it makes reserves that much higher, which is why we see all these central banks in the right. in the east buying up gold for their central banks. And you know, you just heard Powell testify yesterday that they're getting closer to modifying the guidance because you know they announced last July a year ago this month Nicole they announced the new Basel three regulations to the banks and the banks and Wall Street freaked out and have said going back and forth with Powell saying we've right. got to change this and he did say yesterday and he did announce in March of this year that they are going to have to change the reserve requirements right All so right. I'm liking gold always liking gold yeah and look it, it has done well it has no and it will continue I Rebecca promise Walter, <laughs> always great to have you Thanks, on Nicole. a big week too a big right? week a big huge week, uh, preview of you know Powell speaking Earning. Well, CPI, well, yeah. bank earnings, so good to have you on right Thank now. You. Thank you. Rebecca Walzer of Walzer Wealth Management.